Hello and welcome. Um, this is a breakdown of Ivan Illich's work, Medical Nemesis, um, The Limits to Medicine. Um, this first section is just the introduction. I'm going to break this down um, kind of bit by bit, or at least pick up on the most interesting and important parts. Um, if not if not the whole book, at least the most interesting parts. But um, I thought I would start with the introduction. Just go over a few concepts and kind of aims of the book um, before we go into the more uh, kind of later sections, which are more theoretically particular and so forth. So um, the introduction, he introduced us straight away to this idea called, um, it's, it's a Greek term, um, iatrogenesis, iatrogenesis. Um, so this is a term which comes from the word iatros, um, which is the Greek word for physician, and genesis, which means origin. This is a term which basically refers to harm done to people through medical intervention. Um, Illich starts off by posing that the person, the subject, we could say, who is going to... Um, begin this inquiry, and he refers to this iatrogenic um, issue as an endemic. Um, he says, the medical establishment has become a major threat to health. The disabling impact of professional control over medicine has reached the proportions of an endemic, or ep sorry, epidemic. So um, Illich, you know, he's immediately going to tell us that in order to actually do an, an, an analysis, which this book is going to do, uh, you're not going to get that from doctors, basically. You're not going to get it from professional doctors, from anyone within the medical institutions themselves. They are basically, a very, in this introduction, he basically assures us that these people are blind to their own, um, their own uh, activities, basically. So um, he says, quote, my argument is, is that the layman and not the physician has the potential perspective and effective power to stop the current iatrogenic epidemic. So this is quite nice because um, from a philosophical perspective, um, this is a big screw you to like the kind of professional professionalization and the, speciali the specialization of medicine as like a professional field. And he's basically saying we need to give this back to like it's not clear exactly who it's it's someone within the or it's the or it's it's someone within the citizenry the layman it's not um, and I like how he uses the term layman because we can almost infer that there's a kind of clerical class of health experts um, who are blind to their own harm that they're doing and the 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 the, the people that are going to have to like become aware of this harm. And uh, hopefully with the intention of some sort of intervention, um, an intervention into medical intervention itself, we could say, um, is going to be a, is not going to be someone from this expert class. He says, quote, the layman in medicine for whom this book is written will himself have to acquire the competence to evaluate the impact of medicine on healthcare. Among all our contemporary experts, physicians are those trained to the highest level of specialized incompetence for this urgently needed pursuit, end quote. Um, he keeps going. He says, the recovery from, from society-wide itrogenic disease is a political task and not a professional one. It must be based on a grassroots consensus about the balance between the civil liberty to heal and the civil right to equitable health care, end quote. So Illich is basically arguing that the awareness of the harm done through medical intervention will not be cultivated within the professional medical institutions or within at least most of, um, you know, practicing medical um, practitioners themselves. This is going to have to come from outside of that kind of professional expert uh, credentialed space. So um, exactly where it comes from, he doesn't say, at least not in the introduction. I mean, he might say later on in the book. But he, um, we can presume this is kind of like a, 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 a sort of a re reaffirmation of, let's say, the, the philosopher or the kind of a re repoliticization of um, the medical arena, the medical spaces, which have been, I suppose, seen as beyond or above or immune to um, 
perhaps uh, blind, arrogant, um, corro corrosive and corrupting forces of which things like philosophy and politics are supposed to address, but haven't been able to address because they've been kind of the, the, the medical expert medical spaces have shielded themselves off from that sort of awareness and criticism. And I'm sure later on in the book, he's probably going to go into this, this how they've managed to shield themselves off in more detail. We'll have to wait and see. He says, quote, It must now be understood that what has turned healthcare into a sick-making enterprise is the very intensity of an engineering endeavor that has translated human survival from the performance of organisms into the result of a technical manipulation. The threat which current medicine represents to the health of populations is analogous to the threat which the volume and intensity of traffic represent to mobility, the threat which education and media represent to learning, and the threat which urbanization represents to the competence in homemaking. In each case, a major institutional endeavor has turned counterproductive. I th uh, later on, he says, Itrogenesis cannot be understood unless it is seen as the specifically medical manifestation of specific counterproductivity. Um, specific or paradoxical counterproductivity is negative is a negative social indicator for a diseconomy which remains locked within the system that produces it. So I've I've touched upon this topic, uh, this topic before when I was talking about Philip Reif's um, work, The Triumph of the Therapeutic. And what's implied, I think, in a lot of these works which criticize certain modern medical um, interventions into uh, you know, human life um, is that it seems within the modern world, health has lost an end. So we could say like in antiquity, you know, health was something much more holistic. It, it, it was imbued with an idea of happiness, of, of the good life of both physical and mental kind of stability and strength. Um, and perhaps even a sense of freedom. And uh, in the modern world, we have a very kind of obscure notion of what health actually means or what it actually is and what it actually entails. And there seems to always be a, a, a and this is something that even, even uh, Illich and Reif, who certainly aren't postmodernists, um, might share a little bit with like certain postmodern thinkers like Foucault, which is that there's a risk in the, in the mod, in in the kind of industrial as soon as as soon as society industrialized and especially in our era as well as the medical um, technologies get more and more uh, advanced in certain ways I don't mean advanced in a good sense but just advanced in a, in a general like what they can do um, there's a kind of risk of these technologies basically being used to adapt people into um, a certain kind of society and health merely becoming a kind of technical manipulation of the human body and mind rather than it being um, something with its own natural or innate kind of purpose. Um, Illich will assure us that this isn't the kind of problem which we can technocratically fix or that we can fix through, you know, more investment or something like that. So he says, quote, built-in itrogenesis now affects all social relations. It is the result of internalized uh, sorry, it is the result of internalized colonization of liberty by affluence. In rich countries, medical colonization has reached sickening proportions. Poor countries are quickly the, uh, quickly following suit. This process, which I call, which I shall call the medicalization of life, deserves articulate political recognition. Medicine could become a prime target for political action that opens at an inversion of industrial society. So. We see this crisis in 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 medicine, and it, it's it's generally a, you get the strong impression that um, it's generally a crisis of modern institutions um, in general. But specifically, I think medicine. Um, I think it's 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 quite accurate to 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 show to the t uh, today, you know, post COVID lockdowns. Um, and also the crisis within kind of um, hormone therapy and like gender reassignment therapy. Um, and I think that if you then include on top of that biogenetics, you know, the ability to, um, although I, I don't know how far the technology is, is along, but I'm sure it's plausible within the near future that you could be looking at the possibility of kind of a, 
manipulating genomes um, of a fetus, for example, to give it certain traits or to stop it having certain traits. How, and however we want to define traits is another question, but um, that's another discussion. Uh, but uh, there's a sort of um, crisis which is emerging within within modern medicine, which is grounds for like not only a, 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 a sort of political intervention into a class of people or a cast of people, of, of, of experts pretty much, who I think he quite rightly describes as being like some of the most incompetent people and potentially very, very harmful. Um, there's room here for not only a political intervention, but there's also a sort of like in what he describes as a potential inversion of um, industrial society as a whole. So, uh, so we, we could say a sort of awareness is emerging um, where many, many uh, aspects of um, industrial, of, of, of modern technologically advanced life, we could, we could put it, um, are going to be dark, very dark aspects of it are going to be drawn out into the light and we're going to have to encounter these. And so immediately in the introduction, he's raising the question of, well, who will encounter this? It's, it's not going to be professional medical practitioners. It's not going to be anyone in, in, in the uh, kind of um, highly credentialized think tanks and so on. It's, it's, it's going to have to come from 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 anons, <laughs> it's going to have to come from Twitter anons and just just philosophers and writers and and per perhaps some politicians will get involved in this. I'm, and I'm, they already kind of have to an extent. If you if you exa if if you keep an eye on like, it's, it's I think it's particularly bad in the United States because the United States seems to be a country which is much more politically polarized, and it's also a country which is, um, uh very medically advanced like you're gonna you, you can get medical procedures in in the u.s that you can't get in europe for example like there's um the the market seems to be more deregulated there it's more further along in in that sense so um uh at the moment with things like you know trans regenerative reassignment surgeries is a good example of of something which is becoming like it's, it's kind of increasing our awareness of the potentially harmful and perhaps the kind of indifference and stupidity of those who are supposed to oversee these sorts of um, treatments, which they're obviously not well regulated. They're not well thought out. The people overseeing them aren't really thinking about the dangers. They're just kind of going along like kind of machines. They're kind of part of a they're kind of part of a mecha institutional mechanization, which they don't, which are completely oblivious to the potential destruction of or the, the potential harm it could be caused from. Um, uh, you can think about lockdowns as well. I think that the lockdowns really did. Like it would be interesting. It would be interesting to see um, like a. Uh, statistics and polls um, like pre-lockdowns uh, what do you think of doctors pre-lockdowns um, and I'm sure most people would say yeah doctors are good I mean they're up there they're better than politicians they're better than journalists they're better than you know rich capitalists they're better than you know uh, maybe academics who knows but um, after after lockdowns I think you'd see a significant like drop in that I think a lot more people will be extremely suspicious of them um so you've already seen, you've already, I think we've already gone through um, an interesting uh, kind of uh, and, and perhaps quite painful um, exposure to this dark side uh, of the of the modern medical machinery, which we're going to be encountering, obviously more in real life. And I'm going to keep going through with this book and investigating Illich's um, breakdown of this crisis. So that's um, that's the end of the video. Um, remember to um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I've got links to Patreon and Substack and Twitter in the description. Thank you.